if you consider physical form to be impermanent, then um, is it subject to change? That means, will it change in due time, even if it is currently uh, appearing, having an appearance of permanency? Yeah. Will it ultimately change? Will it ultimately cease to exist? Will it not? You know, of course, it seems to be like, of course, something that is impermanent is subject to change. But the trouble is, even things that is impermanent don't look impermanent. Like for example, the the very screen that you're looking at, the physical screen itself, other than the dust or the scratches and the thumb, our our body oil, you know, our thumbprints. Other than that, it looks pretty the same, isn't it? From last night when you use it, whether it's your handphone or the computer, the screen looks pretty permanent. So another layer uh, angle to look at it is. If you look at most of Pali Canon, the Buddha don't. Uh, sometimes he don't go into that. Uh, in fact, most of the time, he talk about the long term changes. Yeah, the long term changes. So like, uh, from young, then growing old, then growing uh, older, and then dying. Yeah. So that's the fun time since the the uh, the impermanence that spends a lifetime yeah so even uh, moment to moment we, don't, we may not see changes in ourselves we may not see changes in others in things but over time sure enough they will change beyond recognition so that's another angle so but in the sutta then it doesn't stop there either. it says is form that is impermanent subject to change subject to suffering that it can bring about suffering. It can that um, we will suffer over it. Yeah. And the monks again will reply, yes, it's subject to suffering. And most importantly, the conclusion is something that is impermanent, subject to change, subject to suffering, fit to be considered self. Worthy to be considered self. To be considered mine, me, or myself. Yeah. In other words, something that is of this nature, always changing, yeah, and can bring suffering, yeah, or ultimately will bring suffering, <laughs> in a way. Yeah. Uh, would you consider it to be you, to be who you are, to be yours, so at that point then it brings the full swing of the implication of impermanence of furniture. Yeah. I like what one of the Thai masters, I think it was either Ajahn Cha or Ajahn Mai, he said that uh, the thing about Anicca is that it is uncertain as well. Yeah. And initially when I read, read that I was like, hmm, interesting. Yeah. But I I, I didn't grasp totally why uncertain then over the years i learned you know the, the the different schools and in the teaching on emptiness it talk about how all conditioned phenomena is impermanent is uh, is dependent on conditions yeah and so it's empty in nature and because it is uh, so, the, the, the changes, the nature of change is not just diff being different, but that the nature of change is that it is not subject to our will. That means the change don't follow our winds and fancy. Yeah. And and then I thought, ah, oh, that is also linked to no self. And then I realized that anicca, anatta, and sunyata, emptiness, that means impermanence, no self, and emptiness, they are actually talking about one thing. And of course, if you don't see it, then it leads to suffering. If you expect it to be otherwise, then you suffer. If you 
if you see that it is like that <clears throat> and you don't fight it don't not fighting can be because you just give up or you can it can be that you unwillingly give in you know uh, or it can be that you truly see that it is like that and no other way and as a result when it happens when it is impermanent you see that yeah this is this is the way it should be it has to be there's no other way as sure as if you take this and you lift, drop and you lift it up yeah you throw it up sure enough it falls down and if it breaks why, why would you be surprised yeah it is when we we oftentimes it is when we do not know all the forces at work then we are surprised and we cannot accept that it breaks yeah we are like why did it break it shouldn't break we don't expect it to break we are that's impermanence yeah that's sickness that's this that's that well, how do we live with it as though like imagine if it is a person then we ask ourselves how do we live with this person so one angle is well see whether you can live with this person and if you cannot then look for somebody else to live with yeah, so in this case if you cannot live with impermanence then how cannot live with impermanence go and look for permanence to live with the buddha's answer was not that the buddha's answer was don't try to seek permanence try to see that this is the way it is that this is <laughs> like it or not this is your roommate if you want to live in this world that is impermanent this is his house you have no choice <laughs> you want to live in samsara samsara belongs to impermanence yeah you can't you want to live in this house called samsara you have no choice you must live with impermanence no choice So living with impermanence can be seen in yes, this other way. Because you think about it, you accept impermanence, it's still impermanent. You don't accept impermanence, it is still impermanence. Recently I've been telling people about acceptance and non-acceptance. Living with impermanence is about accepting impermanence, isn't it? <clears throat> so the question is. What does not accepting impermanence do for you? So I ask students, if not accepting impermanence can make things permanent, by all means. By all means. Yeah. If being angry about things can solve the problem, why not? Right, honestly? Yeah, but in, in life, anger, being angry about things don't necessarily solve problems. In fact, it usually creates one more problem. Now you have the original problem and now you have anger. Impermanence is described as the universal characteristics. It's described as part of how, how things are. How conditioned phenomena is. Yeah, That it is impermanent subject to change it's not a question of whether you can live with it it's a question of when are you going to choose to see it 